going to start talking about a couple of concepts and then hopefully tie them together before we're all done here. Um, I should preface by saying first we'll do a little slideshow and then I'm going to whack away at some braces. <laughs> hopefully you can, you can hear the results of what I'm doing. Uh, the guitar is a system of coupled oscillators. What does that mean? Um, here's a simple model of coupled oscillators. An oscillator is something that vibrates. So the strings are connected to the guitar top, which is connected through the body to the column of air inside the guitar and sets up air pressure waves, which strike the eardrum and you hear music. Um, the tone generator in a guitar is a vibrating string. And as probably most of you know, a string vibrates uh, in a number of different modes or uh, has uh, various harmonics. Uh, the string <coughs> down here, you know, vibrates up and down, and then it also vibrates in the middle. And you'll see the string divides in half, thirds, fourths, fifths, and on and on and on. Uh, string is a, is a very efficient oscillator, a perfectly made string, a string that is um, geometri geometrically accurate to the molecule for its entire length. And vibrating inside a vacuum will go forever and generate you know, enormous uh, uh, harmonics. One important thing to remember is that this is happening all at the same time. The string is vibrating like this mm -hmm. while it's also doing this and it's also dividing into thirds and that's a very complicated motion. The string is attached to the top. The top also vibrates in modes. Uh, here's an illustration of the various modes, first, first harmonic, second, third. You can see the entire top is vibrating up and down, and then it divides into halves, and then it divides into halves in the other plane, and on and on. It gets very complicated. Uh, the guitar is not a round shape, uh, round, round discs vibrate in sort of more uh, easily recognizable geometric forms. Here's another view of the same type of vibration. This is a, a hologram image. And yet another image, which is created by dancing mylar glitter on a top. They're all showing the same kind of thing, even the way the, the top vibrates. People say, well, is it just the top that's vibrating? Well, I did, uh, I once saw a lecture by Carlene Hutchins, who's a physicist and a violin maker, who's done quite a bit of research, and they said that they found what they call a body resonance, or a body vibration mode. She described it as like a baseball, with, you know, the top wraps around the front and the back wraps around the sides and kind of vibrates like this. And that's the first mode. And then the second mode is turned 90 degrees and they, and they couldn't measure anything after that, or at least at, as of that point. And here's a, just a little illustration of what, what's happening inside the guitar. This is a simple column of air. And the air is not exactly sloshing around, but the molecules are moving in a way that they hit each other in various patterns. And as you can see, there are various modes that are happening, again, all simultaneously. And here's a little illustration of what an air pressure wave is. Hang a thread in front of a, 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 a speaker, speaker cone, play it loud enough, and it's going to move around. Again, it's not the, the, a molecule of air is not coming from here to your ear, it's striking other molecules and making a wave. I'm going to just go back to our simple system of, um, of, 
coupled oscillators, which is a good place to start out, but as it turns out, it's really a lot more complicated than that. I once uh, did this um, uh, the same presentation, and a guy in the audience, a buddy of mine, a, a luthier, Rick Turner, told me I was all wrong. <laughs> and, and he's right, no, he's totally right. I mean, he simplified it just so you can kind of, as, as a starting point, but in reality, you know, the top vibrates has an effect on the sides and the back and the air column and the neck and they're all kind of working on each other. What's actually happening here is you're taking that perfect, potentially perfect vibration of a string and you're putting it through a set of filters. You know, the top wants to vibrate in certain kinds of ways, the air column wants to vibrate in certain kinds of ways, and so we're going to try to optimize that. Harmonics, let's go back to Go back to our string. The string vibrates in various modes. These are also known as harmonics or analogous to harmonics. Here's a little chart that shows the, the note C. And these are the modes, the frequency ratios, the you know, dividing into half and thirds and fourths. These are the, the these are, this is the harmonic number. Okay, and these are the intervals, which is which is kind of interesting. What you what you notice is that, or what I notice is that the first six harmonics. What are those numbers? Oh, one, three, and five. Oh, right. What does that mean? Major chord. Major chord. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that you know that everyone knows that what the major triad is full <coughs> of an individual note. Um, it isn't until you get to the seventh and on that things started getting even more complicated. More about that later. Timber. What do we mean by timber? Timber is what we mean by the actual sound of a musical instrument. It's it's what it's how we distinguish between human voice, a piano, a guitar, or from one guitar to another. Timber is made up of a number of components. There's a, like a white noise component, fingernail or pick against string. It has to do with the onset and decay of notes and harmonics. But the biggest component is the presence of the, of the harmonic structure. And that's what we're going to talk about mostly here. This is a nice illustration of I guess a middle C note on a grand piano, on a good grand piano. And you can see uh, decibels aren't noted here, but it's all proportional. These are the harmonics. So you can see in a piano, a good piano note, you've got a strong fundamental, which is the first harmonic, and a, and a very strong second harmonic, which is the octave higher. And then you have quite a lot of smaller harmonics. And that's, that's pretty interesting. There's a lot of them. There's a little hole here, but you can see there's a little bit harmonic 13. So that's kind of what the general shape and structure of a good piano note looks like. A couple others. Flute is kind of similar. We know a flute to be different from a piano by some of these other things, the onset and decay, the white noise factor. Uh, and a violin is a little bit different. The most important thing here is, th is to see that there are differences. And here's the, the tuning fork. <laughs> the tuning fork is the simplest oscillator. It just has one fundamental. It's a very sterile note. We don't want our guitars to sound like tuning forks. We want our guitars to be made out of resonant materials kind of a way to explain how some of this can be controlled. I've made a chart here that has um, the first column is the white keys on the piano, A, B, C, D, E, F. I didn't bother adding uh, the sharps, flats. 
have these are the harmonics. And so for every note, I've listed the actual note of the harmonics of that in that order. And you can see it's, it's a jumbled bunch of notes. So imagine if you had an oscillating system that had just one resonance. I just picked A, okay? <coughs> Here's what your notes would look like. Well, the A would be very strong, relatively strong, because some of these harmonics would be present. If you look at this other note, the C, for example, that A resonance is only going to show up in the, what is it, the 13th? The 13th harmonic of the C note. That's going to be a mighty thin sounding note. Now the ear has an ability, if there are enough harmonics in a structure, the ear has the ability to put these together and understand what the actual note is. For example, most steel string guitars do not have a, a resonant note as low as, as the low E on the open E string. What you're hearing Fortunately, what you're, what you're often hearing is a strong second harmonic there. But if you have enough harmonics, you know, the ear will put it together and tell you that's a C note or whatever, even though the, the fundamental and the, and the second harmonic may not even be there. Here's just an illustration of what would happen if you have a system with four resonant frequencies, four resonances. You can see these are beginning to fill in very nicely, or more nicely. <laughs> um, so, but again, some uh, some notes are much stronger than than others. A looks very good. B is still kind of a weak note, probably a very weak note. So, what do you think <coughs> the objective of voicing a guitar should be? get as many different resonant frequencies as possible. To my way of building, these are the, these are the four things that I'm looking for in a guitar. A good string to string and note to note balance, and you achieve that by getting a lot of resonant frequencies. Clarity, clarity is more important than decibels. Clarity is strong fundamentals, but it's important to have sufficient presence. Presence comes when you have these harmonic structures are filled in for every note. And an appealing character, what that means is the guitar sounds like what it's supposed to sound like. Brazilian Rosewood Dreadnought, you know, or a mahogany parlor guitar.